How can I use technology to be the most productive possible? It's no understatement to say that this is one of the most important questions that we face right now. Now, if you're an Apple user and you have multiple Apple devices, maybe you have an iPhone and a MacBook Pro, maybe you have an iPhone and an iPad, say, you've probably loved using them. I mean, it's true for most people, but the truth is there are a ton of tricks and hidden features within these devices to make you way more efficient and productive with your workflow, which you're probably not already taking advantage of just because they're not so immediately easy to find. And those features are exactly what this video is about. I'm going to be telling you 10 of the best ways that you can leverage multiple Apple devices for increased productivity. And not just to make you a little bit more productive, but maybe 10 times, maybe even 100 times if you're really efficient with using these features. And I'm going to group them into four different categories. First, we're going to talk about how you can extend the capability of your devices for making things easier like signing documents and importing different media files into your projects. And we're going to talk about easy ways to share items and files. Thirdly, we're going to talk about how you can achieve more frictionless access access to different parts of your devices. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about how you can communicate with others easier. Now, all of these different features are grouped under what Apple calls their continuity set of features for their devices. And make sure you watch the video until the end if you wanna see some bonus tips for enhancing productivity, which will be available with Apple's new software updates, which they recently announced at their Worldwide Developer Conference 2021. So let's get into the video. What's up everybody, my name is Alex Rodzianko and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I make weekly videos on tech, productivity and personal finance. So if you are interested to see more content like this and you find it helpful, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of the latest news on the channel. All right, so let's talk about enhancing the capability of your devices. First of all, I wanna talk about a feature called continuity sketch and continuity markup. Let's say you're working on a document, maybe in Microsoft Word or Pages, for example, and you want to insert a sketch really quickly into your work, but you don't wanna go surfing around the web for different images and you also don't want to spend the time sketching something on paper and then trying to take photographs of it and scan it in via printer or something like that. Apple makes this really easy for you. If you already have an iPad, all you need to do is open your Mac, open the document you're working on, click file, and then insert from your other device, and then add sketch. Then you can simply draw on your iPad and the image that you've produced will be imported into your work on your Mac. Alternatively, you can simply use the shortcut control click within your file and then choose add sketch from the shortcut menu. Now continuity markup is quite similar, but it's really useful, especially for signing documents. And it has saved me tens of hours of work, maybe even hundreds during the time that I've used it. Here's how it works. From Finder on your Mac, select the PDF that you want to mark up and then press space to enter the preview window. Then click mark up at the top of the window. Then use your iPad to create the annotations or notes that you need, either with your finger or Apple Pencil, and then the job's finished. Alternatively, you can control click the document and then choose quick actions and then mark up from the shortcut menu. Then from the markup toolbar from the top of the preview window, select annotate. Then a markup window will open on your device. At that point, again, you can use Apple Pencil or your finger with the sketch tools, or you can tap the plus sign and you can use the markup tools for adding text, the signature, magnifier, or shapes and arrows. As you're sketching away, you'll see changes appearing live on your Mac. And then when you're finished, you can just click done. And then to save changes, just click done on your Mac as well. Continuity camera is similarly useful for importing images really quickly from other devices. It's especially useful if you want to have digital copies of things like receipts or tickets that you've accumulated. Select the photo from the file menu within the document you're working in, and then choose either to take a photo or to scan a document. Then take the photo on your other device and you'll immediately immediately be able to see it within your pages document, or you can just scan a receipt and then a straightened up digital copy in PDF form will be available in the finder. Lastly, within this category of enhancing the capability of your devices is Sidecar, which is basically the perfect tool for Mac users to extend the amount of screen size that they have at their disposal to work with. It basically allows you to use your iPad as a second display while you're using your Mac. This is such a useful feature, for example, if you're a student or if you're just anybody that wants to read a text and then have also some extra space for taking notes. You can have the main text on your iPad for example, and then maybe your note taking app could be open on your Mac and you can have complete control on what's on both screens simply from one device all at one time. Now the way it works is slightly different depending on what recent Mac OS version you're running, but in every case it's really simple. If you're on Mac OS Big Sur, you just go in the display menu in the control center or the menu bar and then just click your iPad and you're ready to go. If you're on Mac OS Catalina, you just click the AirPlay icon in the menu bar and then click your iPad from the selection. If you can't actually see the AirPlay icon available, then you're going to need to go into the Apple menu and then into system preferences 
preferences and then into displays. And lastly, select show mirroring options in the menu bar when available. There are a couple of other ways to use Sidecar 2. One of them is you can just move a window from your Mac to your iPad. So you hover over the little green full screen button in a window, and then you can just choose to move that window either to or from your iPad display. Once you have moved stuff over to your iPad, you'll see that a little sidebar will open up at the side, and that basically just makes available some commonly used controls on the side of the screen. You can also connect using the menu in Sidecar Preferences. Just click the Apple menu on your Mac, then System Preferences, and then Sidecar. Sidecar does have a couple of different modes to it, which are useful to be aware of. In addition to being able to actually extend the amount of screen space that you have available to you, you can also switch to Mirroring Mode, which literally just mirrors the image of one display on another. Screen extension is the default setting, but you can change it very easily. Just go into the Display menu or the AirPlay menu, and you should be able to see a little blue iPad icon while you're using Sidecar, and then just select the option to mirror your display. Ending a Sidecar session is also really easy. In macOS Big Sur, simply go to the display menu in the control center or the menu bar, and select your iPad to disconnect from it. In macOS Catalina, go to the AirPlay menu and then choose the option to disconnect. Or you can use the disconnect button in the sidebar of your iPad or in the sidecar preferences in your Mac. The second category of tips and tricks here is all about sharing files and items really quickly. First of all, probably my favorite feature, which is AirDrop, which allows you literally just to drop one file from one device to another. Now, over the past year, especially during the pandemic, this has saved me so much time when working, and I'll give you an example. I'm a PhD student, so one of the things I have to do quite a lot of is teach undergraduates and grade their work on a regular basis. Now, if that kind of work is submitted electronically, then giving written feedback can be really time consuming because you might have to go into your computer you might have to print off the work, add some annotations on with a pencil or pen, then maybe take a photo of it, import it back into your computer and then email it or upload it into a database somewhere. But AirDrop makes this process so much simpler if you have both an iPad and a Mac. With AirDrop, I can simply open the file I want to send on my Mac click share, and then select the device I want to send it to. And then once I've received it on my iPad, I can put in the necessary annotations and then simply airdrop it back to my computer, or I can send it straight from my iPad to whoever needs to receive it. Another way of using airdrop is you can control click on a file in Finder and then click share, then choose airdrop and then choose a recipient. It doesn't have to be one of your devices, you can also send it to others. Or another alternative method again is you can use the airdrop window and you can drag files to recipients in that window. So you can select airdrop in the sidebar of the Finder window, or choose go and then airdrop from the menu bar. Then the airdrop window will show nearby users and you can simply drag documents you want to send to any of the users there. Receiving files with airdrop is also so easy to do. So when somebody nearby attempts to send you a document with airdrop, you'll see a notification will come up or a message in the airdrop window. Then you just click accept if you want to take the file and save it to your downloads folder. Next is the handoff feature, which allows you to use any compatible app on your phone, for example, and then to transfer your progress on that app straight to another device. First, you have to open an app which is compatible with handoffs, such as Mail, Maps, or Safari. Start making progress on any task that you like, and then you just continue on your other device. For example, if you're starting on your phone, you can just go straight to your Mac and then click the app with the handoff icon attached to it, and then you can just pick up where you left off. If instead you're moving to your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, then instead you need to open the file switcher, and then you just click the little banner which comes up at the bottom of the screen. Just make sure that there are some things that you've already done to make sure that handoff is enabled on all of your different devices you want to use it with. Every device has to be signed in with the same Apple ID, have Bluetooth on, have Wi-Fi on, and have handoff turned on. To switch on handoff on your Mac, you just go to the Apple menu and then to System Preferences, and then you click General. Then you select Allow Handoff between this device and other iCloud devices. With your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, you go to Settings and then General, and then AirPlay and Handoff, and then switch on handoff. And in your Apple Watch, you want to go into your Apple Watch app on your phone, then tap General and turn on in enable handoff. And you can use handoff on your Apple Watch to move to your iPhone or your Mac, but not devices like your iPad. Okay, and then lastly within this category, we've got Universal Clipboard. It's enabled exactly the same way handoff is, and it's really simple. It's such a great feature. It allows you really quickly to copy and paste items across different devices. Just copy anything you like, and then it's immediately added to the clipboard of any nearby device. So for example, you can copy text on your phone and then immediately go to your nearby iPad and paste it somewhere you like. Items will remain in your Universal Clipboard only for a short while or until you replace them by copying something on any one of your devices. Okay, so now let's move on to accessibility features. So these are all features that allow you to use different parts of your devices really quickly and easily for day-to-day -day tasks. So first up is Apple Pay. Now, if you've ever experienced the frustration of going online and then wanting to buy something, but then not immediately having your credit card details to hand, maybe you don't know exactly where your card is and you're kind of spending a while trying to find it, 
this feature is massively going to save you time. Once you've added your credit or debit card details to your Apple ID account, then you can start by shopping on the web using Safari. You just need to look out for the Apple Pay option, click it on your Mac, and then go straight to your iPhone or iPad in order to use Touch ID or Face ID to confirm your purchase at a touch of a button, and then the transaction will immediately go through. You can also use Apple ID on your MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, and on your Apple Watch, you can do it by just double-clicking the side button. Now, Instant Hotspot is another feature which allows you quick internet access if you're on the go and you can't immediately connect to Wi-Fi. Now, you need to make sure that your iPhone or iPad with with cellular level hardware has an activated carrier plan that provides you with personal hotspot service. And again, all devices need to be signed into the same iCloud account and also have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi switched on. On your Mac, go to the Wi-Fi status bar in the menu bar and then select the name of the iPhone or iPad that's providing the instant hotspot service. And then just click the name of the device to connect. If differently you're on an iPad, iPod Touch or other iPhone, then just go to settings and then Wi-Fi and then tap the name of the iPhone or iPad that's providing the personal hotspot. Okay, and lastly in this category, we've got auto unlock. This is a really great feature for just getting into your devices quickly without having to type in passwords manually. It might only sound like it saves only a few seconds every time you use it, but if you're constantly in and out of your devices, then that time can actually add up to a pretty substantial amount, which you can save by using this feature. Auto Unlock works in the following way. If you have an Apple Watch on, then you can go towards your Mac and then your Mac will know immediately that you already have your watch on and will log you in automatically, so you don't have to enter any passwords. Now the first time you switched on, restarted or logged out of your Mac, you do have to enter a password manually, but then every other time after that, your Apple Watch will log in automatically for you. In order to set up Auto Unlock, again, you have to make sure that your Apple Watch and your Mac are both signed into the same Apple ID and are set up for two-factor authentication. Your Apple Watch has to be set up for using a password, and on your Mac, you have to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled. Then on your Mac, you simply go to the Apple menu, System Preferences, and then Security and Privacy. Then select Use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac, or Allow your Apple Watch to unlock your Mac. Okay, so the last couple of features are all about making communication between yourself and others a lot more seamless and easy to access. So first, you can make and receive phone calls across different devices. Now, this is really useful, for example, if you don't necessarily have your phone on you, you're working from your Mac, but you still wanna be able to make a phone call to somebody without necessarily having to search for your device somewhere else. So if you wanna make a call from your Mac, then you need to move the pointer over any phone number in Contacts, Calendar, Safari, or any other app that detects that sort of data. Then you wanna click the arrow in the box that outlines the phone number and then select the option to call the number using your iPhone. Alternatively, you can use the FaceTime app. After you open the app, then you just enter a phone number on your Mac and then you press the button to call using audio. You can also do the same on your iPad or iPod Touch. All you need to do is select a phone number in Calendar or Safari, for example, or any app that automatically detects it and then press call. Or alternatively, you can open the FaceTime app, press plus, enter the phone number and then click the button to call using audio. On your Mac, you'll see that notifications come up if somebody's trying to phone your iPhone and then you can answer the call, you can send it to voicemail or you can send a message to the caller. On your iPad or iPod Touch, all you need to do is slide in order to answer the call. Now, in order to make sure that cellular phone calls are set up across all of your different devices, you need to make sure that you do the following. First, make sure that each device is signed into iCloud with the same Apple ID, signed into FaceTime with the same Apple ID, has Wi-Fi turned on and is each connected to the same network using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Then in your phone, go to settings, phone, calls on other devices, and then turn on allow calls on other devices. On your iPad or iPod Touch, go to settings, FaceTime, and then turn on calls from iPhone. And on your Mac, open the FaceTime app and then choose FaceTime and then preferences. Then click the settings and then select calls from iPhone. SMS or MMS text messages are also really easy to send and receive across all of your different devices. And the same is true for iMessages, which appear as blue bubbles. Now to set up this feature on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, you need to go to settings and then messages, and then send and receive. On your Mac, open the messages and then choose messages and then go to preferences and then you want to click iMessage. Now make sure that you're signed into iMessage with the same Apple ID on all of your different devices. Now on your iPhone, you want to go to settings and then messages and then text message forwarding. And then you can simply choose which devices can send and receive text messages from your phone. Now if you're not set up for two-factor authentication on your Apple ID, then you're going to get sent a verification code on each of your other devices. So you just need to enter that code on your iPhone. 
So as long as your iPhone is switched on and connected to a Wi-Fi or mobile network, any SMS or MMS text can be sent and received on any of the devices that you've added. Okay, so that brings us to the end of what are, in my view, the 10 best ways that you can leverage the Apple ecosystem across multiple devices to increase the efficiency and productivity of your workflow. So I'd highly recommend using these features if you haven't already and if your devices are compatible. If you want to check whether or not your devices are compatible with any of the features that we've talked about in this video, you can do so really easily by going on Apple's website. Okay, so I did mention at the beginning of the video that I had a couple of extra bonus tips and tricks to share which you will be able to use once Apple releases their new software update with iOS 15. These features aren't currently available, but once they are, they're going to kind of refine the continuity suite that Apple provides even more. So the first feature is universal control. Now this basically allows you to connect a device like your iPad to your Mac and then to control all of these different connected devices via one central hub. So for example, you might control your iPad with your trackpad on your MacBook. And you'll be able to do things like drop content just back and forth between the different devices. So it's gonna be great for things like, say, sketching something on your iPad and then immediately dropping it into a slide on Keynote if you're using that on your Mac. And a second feature coming soon will be AirPlay to Mac. So this feature is gonna allow you to use a device like your iPhone and then to share things like games, photos, presentations, whatever it might be, to your Mac. And then you can use the Mac's high fidelity sound system as well to project the sound from your phone. So this feature is gonna allow you to just share what's already on quite a small screen to others in a much larger screen space. So it's just gonna make it a little bit easier to see things visibly and clearly. Now I think in many ways what's interesting about Apple continuity is that it's really telling a story of blurring these different lines between different devices. Being able to use something like an iPad and a Mac but controlling it from one place, being able to share files seamlessly between different displays. It's almost as if the boundary between these devices is becoming increasingly removed as connectivity between them becomes increasingly seamless. But also speaking very practically, I think all of these different features of Apple continuity offer really effective ways of enhancing productivity and efficiency with your workflow. So if you haven't already tried them, you should definitely give them a go. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you did like this video, then please make sure to smash the like button. And if you found it especially helpful, then go ahead and subscribe. You'll keep up to date with all of the latest news of the channel and you'll be able to know as soon as new content is released. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.